becomes act. eventually act. act. Appropriation act. <coughs> Similarly, finance act. Then, when, when it gets the approval from the legislature and it's approved by the governor in a state or president for the parliament, then this becomes an act. Then we start with also distributing funds to the heads of departments. There are three, four tires. Number one is major activities. Because government tires go, Secretary did live for planning and field offices for implementation of government policies. Fine? Right? These are two main tires. At the secretariat level, we plan things and we send it to the field offices for implementation. So we go to major heads of department. They appropriate it to the appropriate levels in their department. Down the level, because whatever budget budgets you have forecasted from each department, even each subunit, even each small office, you will get that money for salaries part of it. Then rest of the things can be. It can be curtailed or sometimes they give excess also. At the end of the day, we see how much was the excess expenditure and how much was the shortfall in application of government money to what legislator has approved for us. Right? That's about the budgeting process. Now, this whole process from financial planning to spending and then to drawing of excess and shortfall this is all contained in financial code. There, there are different chapters. First and foremost and important is those people who work for the government, their pain allowances. That's the first chapter. Alright. Then second tier is how you make expenses for your office expenses. There are small expenses, but when you consolidate, that's a very large expense. We call it contingencies. Right? Then, works. <clears throat> when you have to do some construction work, what you need is Stores and stocks. That is stores and stocks. And these are the four major components <coughs> on which you will concentrate. <coughs> Either you read it from the book or go from uh, read my guide, whatever you like. These are the four tires of the government spending. Fine? Any issues in this? The government has two distinct functions. Number one is and that's very paramount because that's that's the feeder for everything. That's the receipt of money. The major source of government money. What are major source of government money? Yes. <coughs> First is taxation revenue. Yes, next. Sorry, fine. Fine is that will come later. Interest. Interest. Interest uh, that will also come later. <coughs> grants. No, in fact, government gives grants. But uh, a really grant is not a permanent uh, income. So from capitals? Capital receipts. 
This interest, in fact, is a part of capital receipts from you. Right? Then we have from stamp duty registration. This is also a very large component of government uh, earning in the state, at the state level. Mm, then provident funds. I will not tell you about how, how provident funds help government financial management at this point of time because that is not in your syllabus and will be confusing over the issue. But, but I am just telling you. And then other monies. These are the sources of government revenues. Then from this goes the expenditure. Expenditure for all these heads. How we spend money on these heads. Whatever is surplus, that's why whatever, and sometimes government has a deficit also. So then what do we do? We raise it, it takes us a little bit. Borrowings. Borrowings, of, of course. Borrowing is, in fact, part of government, uh, you know, financial forecasting. That's an ongoing process. But still, sometimes we have, despite borrowing, we have sometimes fiscal deficits. deficits. In almost every budget, we have. Contingency fund view. Sorry? Contingency fund. Contingency fund. You write contingency fund. That's a different chapter. Does this become clear to you? Can I add it? Yes. We'll come to very important another factor that she is trying to know. Government has three types of accounts. Consolidated fund. Contingency fund. public account. Contingency fund is always dependent on consolidated fund. Whenever there is a calamity or unforeseen um, situation in the state or the country, what we do is, that is not forecasted originally what I have told you, when you prepare budgets, the budgets which are approved by the parliament, they cannot foresee what will happen. There will be a flood or an earthquake. That cannot be foreseen at that point of time. So once a contingency arises, you don't need to necessarily go to parliament. What we do is, we take out some money from the consolidated fund and put it into the contingency fund. Then what is the need for having two funds? Your question naturally should be, sir, why should we have them two funds? If we are taking money from the consolidated fund and putting it in the contingency fund, this is to obviate necessity of taking sanctions from the parliament. What happens when you have made payments out of this contingency fund, then you go to parliament. Sir, in view of this difficulty, we had appropriate this much of amount from consolidated fund to the contingency fund. We have spent this much amount. This is the um, surplus money. We, we are putting it back to the consolidated Please accept it. Right? Then public money is other receipts, provident funds, interest incomes, government borrowings, that all comes from public account. In this, you don't need a nod from the parliament. The basic difference between these two accounts is, this is subject to approval of the parliament. This is post facto, what you call suo motor notes of the parliament. Here you don't need any approval. Uh, did you understand that? This was your question. No. Okay. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. Clear to you? Yes, sir. yes. Any any other issue connected to this? White DC bill and red DC bill. We'll come to that when, when we discuss <coughs> contingencies. <coughs> the receipt of money is 
through many um, sources, but main source in our state is through treasuries. And in JNK state, treasuries operate through JK Bank. That's called banking treasuries. In which JK Bank is authorized to accept payments on behalf of the government in Kashmir. And in some places, we don't have treasuries, we straight away deal with the JNK Bank. JNK Bank used to be banker to the state government. Now, for the last four or five years, they are working with RBI. What are borrowings? How many of you are financial uh, management students? Anyone? So, uh, what are they saying? Remember? Ah, they are bankers to the state government. Now, JNK um, government is also working with RBI for their needs, borrowings. Mm. Uh, how many of you know how RBI works? Yeah. Regulations for the banks, for the working of the banks, banking companies. Uh, if anyone commits some malfunction, RBI has a watchdog, like a, he has a... Yeah, number one is financial watchdog, that's very really right. And number Bankers, second, Bankers, more Bankers. important is... Yeah, yeah. It is Central Bank of the country. Central Bank? But what are the functions they carry? Number one, she said. Repo rate, reverse repo rate. Repo rate will come later, but uh, first function is controlling the financial institutions in the country, including financial markets. Because the whole economic spectrum of the country stands on banks. Banks. All borrowings go from the banks. That adds to the growth. So RBI is in number one, she said, rightly said, watchdog. That's one part. Second part is they control interest regime in the country. What is the asking rate? How would you how would you peg a rate at 10 percent? How do you reach that rationale that RBI provides based on growth indices in the Country. Then sometimes there is a disparity. A particular uh, industry is growing at, at an exponentially 150% and there are some sectors which are not growing at that rate. So RBI provides a level for financial management, how to convert these two. And then third important point is whatever surplus money each bank has at the end of each working banking day, that goes to RBI. Although the money would remain in the, with the bank. Mm -hmm. but, but now, in most of the uh, major cities in India, RBI has created chests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the money would go to their chest also. But whatever money is surplus with the branch, so government has fixed the rate for that. That's called CRR, Cash mm -hmm. Reserve Ratio. Mm -hmm. It's different for, for different banks and different situations. The banks who deal in priority sector lending, they have a higher CRR. They can retain more money. The banks who are private banks and dealing with retail banking only, they will have lesser CRR. But then to obviate this necessity, which bank will have uh, what uh, CRRs, now we have a national policy on CRR. So what is the CRR? How much cash you can retain? And what will you do with the rest of the cash? You give it to the RBI. RBI gives you a rate. That's called repo rate. So if you give money to RBI, he'll, he'll credit your account by interest. Same, same in. You give them money, they give you interest. Sometimes it happens that you are, you are in the problem of liquidity. Unforeseen major advances for what there is there's some other problem. Then what do you do? You ask RBI, give us some money. They tell you, okay, you take the money, but we we'll charge you reverse repo. <laughs> Fine? Is that understandable? Any issues in this? And I think this is not your subject also. No. Thank God. Something has been left public. <laughs> 
as judicial officer when you suddenly learn gradually I have seen very wonderful judgments by our colleagues in the judiciary and they have complete understanding that's of course through help from the educators but very wonderful judgments anyways then obviously when you receive money you have to maintain accounts that's maintenance of accounts cash book is the main uh, uh, business book in the government it has a side on the left side whatever money you receive whether you do it from the public or from your higher office or whatever and whatever money you spend that that goes to right coming from this side and going out from this very simple very simple no debit credit and business no nothing no worry then why does the borderation creep up i think at this point of time you should understand that left side is what you receive from the what you receive by way of grants what you receive from the borrowings if you are allowed to because only a few departments are in the borrowing then central receipts there's receipts um, coming from the central number right because some uh, departments like taxation department finance department uh, what we call in our state they get money from central on on the count of gst that's the latest addition that's the taxation part of it what all state share that comes to the finance department so that's about the cash book then in maintenance of cash book you have to maintain it and in the evening you have to go to your head of department get in signed uh, physical cash counting that the cash i show as balance in hand that's usually very low when he records a certificate every day that i have counted the cash this was counted before me and it's okay then comes the payment in uh, earlier days we had a system of treasury operations we would prepare a bill that would go to the treasury officer he would again verify it whether they have prepared the bills correctly that's the government's two tier financial management uh, inspection system and then treasury officer would okay your payments and give you the money you go and take it into your cash books now for the last two years there was a very radical change which our ex finance minister mr drago had proposed unfortunately in between uh he got uh, into this political scramble and he had to leave that was pay and account system that was more transparent maybe i don't know because we have implemented it in various ministries in the government of india we find the results very fine and probably he had also wished that jnt should also have this system that when azhar sah was the uh, chief minister He had introduced the zero budgeting. He had started with, but that didn't work. That didn't really work because we didn't have a lot of money. Because we needed to have a lot of money in one year at least, while we could say that we are, our liabilities are zero now. We, uh, that that took place. These were two major financial uh, reforms. Then, of course, third reform was, of which I was also a, uh, part of the project. That was financial accounting reforms. Uh, in which government accounts which are at present uh, in a single entry system that is cash coming in or going out only one entry to shift it to what you call accrual account that's a very long tail we don't go into that then departmental payments then of, of course we switch to a new system uh pfms platform that's electronic platform so now there are there's no need of checks we need to go to the platform and transfer money via treasury accounts now there's no intervention as such but in coming one or two years it will be completely obviated and everything will be on um, it platform all payments will be to, uh, centralized uh, 
a company. And now you see these chapters, some of the chapters which, are, which were in earlier days prevalent, those have now outlived their life and now they are uh, redundant. We don't need to discuss. Then comes audit objections and recoveries. Audit as you know is a very important component of everything. Everything is auditable now. So when audit comes, they would point out some deficiencies or defalcations in making payments. So then they ask that you recover this money. Those are called recoveries at the instance of audit. You have to get those amounts recovered and credit it into the government account. Fine. You are responsible for overcharge. If you are head of the department, then if any expenditure, whether it's made by down the line officer or you, that's your responsibility. You are responsible for overcharges. Finance department uh, keeps on uh, doing checks against wasteful expenditures, frauds, irregularities. Then what happens to what happens to losses that occur to the government property? Are you getting me? There are accepting whatever is owned by the private enterprise. The rest of the everything is with the government. The forest, the mountains, the roads, the lands below the roads, drainage systems, everything under the sun, that's governments, small things we also own. So, in fact, to have a record of this and to have a control over this is a very massive exercise, it's not a very small thing. That's why we have 36 departments in the JNK state, which are responsible for uh, housekeeping, taking care of the assets and uh, doing all those things. Now, if there are some losses, say for example there is a flood or there is an earthquake, there is a system in the government, how to report, who will report? If there is an earthquake, who will report? If there is a snowfall and some properties are lost or destroyed, so there are various tires, various levels of governments which report uh, to the government. That starts from the what we have discussed, Panchayat. Panchayat is the basic uh, cornerstone of reporting government losses. Patwari is the most important person, of course, because he has to estimate. Uh, somebody of you has a knowledge how Patwari works, how revenue department works. You must have an insight on that also, once you come out of this exam. That is about who will, who will, who will report on uh, losses made by the government or assets of the government which have been destroyed in various uh, situations and how do we exhibit these losses in our accounts, right? Then there is a system of write-off. Write-off means if you have an asset on your books, on the books of the department or the government, and now the asset no, no longer exists. Say for example there was a bridge. It's in the books of my office that I am maintaining the study bridge. And then suddenly one day what happens that flood uh, crashes into bridge and it's destroyed. Now bridge doesn't exist. So what I will do is I will remove this from the, from my books, from the assets I am maintaining. I will say the bridge has been destroyed. No, I will make a very chronological and detailed assertion about this. This will go to my head of the pattern and ultimately the government and it's the government which has the power to write off. Write off means you have to remove that asset from your books because if you don't have this control tomorrow you will find the road has been sold. Then there are inter-government and inter-departmental transactions. Miscellaneous rules, small issues, erasers, overwritings in books of accounts and cash book and all. How to issue duplicates? Duplicate, uh, if 
you give me a receipt for money. Say we have received in the government account ten thousand rupees from Mr. Vijayendra Mahan, right? If I I lost the receipt, what what would you do? How would you deal with this situation? You have a rule for that also. That is, you cannot give me another receipt because how will you account for? Your receipt books are numbered. <coughs> so what you do? You issue a certificate in the second instance. That's about the duplicates, uh, lost documents, issue of duplicates or copies of documents. This is regarding claims against railways for goods lost in transit, cement or all other government stores that come to lodge their claims. Department will check of receipts and disbursements, check on revenue receipts. You have heard about uh, bill phrases and expenditure. This bill was overdrawn. This bill was overstated. This, you know, have you heard how frauds occur in taxation? Have you ever thought? Do you know how frauds in taxation occur? Because in taxation, nobody is nobody is paying you anything. So how can the fraud occur in the first place? The show, show extra expenditures. I mean taxation income. Evasion. Yes, she's right. Tax evasion. Or poor feature of tax. If you allow me, I can take two minutes to explain these two spectrums. What happens is, in taxation, I plan, I have 50,000 crores income tax this year. Then, I'll have indirect taxes, 40,000 crores. Fine. My HOD says, you have a target of 40,000 crores. At the end of the year, I end up recovering only 38,000. So what's my deficit? 2,000? Fine. I'm deficit by 2,000. Now, if you make a percentage to this, what will be that percentage? I think 8%. 8%? So my deficiency is. But in taxation recovery, you don't you don't uh, perceive on these figures because these are falsified figures. These cannot give you the best results. So now what you will do is out of these 38,000 crores, what were the payments for the current year? In taxation matters, point of recovery, time of recovery is very es of essence. If you are recovering in these 38, this is your current year's target. In these 38,000, if you are recovering 30,000 for the current year and 8,000 for the previous year. So what do you do? You are this percentage will alter. Actually, you are deficient by 10,000 crores. Am I right? This happens in taxation. Number one is evasion. People evade. That can be voluntary or that can be due to lack of education. Then sometimes what happens is we give a four picture. What does four picture mean? If I am the excise digestion officer, there are 30 claims, four of them. Now you are my friend. You make an appeal. I give a favorable judgment. Mm -hmm. I give a remission. All right. I accept your uh, plea. Your case is all right. You, you will not pay tax on this, whatever. Whatever is the case in, in law. This can happen. Or, conversely, if your recovery is due this year, because big business have big, uh, you know, transactions. So I tell you, all right, don't worry. You, you do it next year. 
and in business everything is money. Money is interest. That way, taxation can have a follow. Then we will come to contingencies. Small expenses in the office, apart from salaries, whatever you spend, that's in the contingency. Somebody was talking about red DC and white DC bills. But she didn't ask me, what's this DC? Who was asking the question? You were asking? You were. What, what, you didn't ask me, what's DC? You said you, you are very confident of red DC. Full term. You don't know. This is red detailed contingency. I am sure from this chapter you should get at least one and a half question. This is contingent bills, detailed contingent bills. Whenever you make an expenditure for the office, other than salaries, that will be booked under contingencies. That can be anything from tea packet to water bottles or whatever, small expenses, those go to. Now there are some departments which take very huge advances. For example, you have a uh, CAPD, Consumer Affairs Public Distribution System, mm, what you call food distribution system. The officers take huge advances because they have to place funds with the FCI so that they can buy uh, food grains. And then what they do is they send it to the district offices, district godowns. This is godowns in turn send, sell it to the sales office, sales outlets. They collect money from the public. Now if he is an officer, he is taking money from me for purchasing uh, full grains. But he is only collecting officer. Collecting officer is Mr. B. So you have to create a uh, what you call co coordination. How much advance he took? How much advance is uh, recovered from the public against this full grain? That's called valuation of full grains. Full grains. Small advances here and there in departments, in buying things for 20,000, 30,000, that's very minor and that's manageable and uh, uh, what you call verifiable. But there are certain situations where you take very huge advances, running into several thousand crores. And we are already very poor state. If we don't have proper control on this, then we will be doomed. White contingency bill is, which uh, in earlier times used to be a bill taken to the treasury.